today we're going to show you how you would approach some traditional sort of data move slash migration and how Acting Data Connect can assist in that. So you typically start off with some form of legacy database and that database may be part of your existing system um, or it could be something that you've inherited. And typically you want to move that data to another database. Part of that process is you may export that information into a CSV or an Excel file, manual sort of upload into the new database, new table or whatever that you're connecting onto. So we're going to show you how we can remove this and remove a lot of the manual processing and automate it through using Actium Data Connect. My name is Greg Craven, I'm from Cumulus Technologies and my details are there if you require it. There's a quick disclaimer page, you can pause the video and read through the detail. Let's say we're going to show you how we can create a real simple map um, to integrate two tables together. And no matter whether the database is from the same or different vendors or different versions or other systems. So we'll uh, show you how we can sort of do that using our Actium Data Connect product. So this is actually covering our first pillar um, where we define what Actium can, can do for most organizations. And that is the migration pillar. So we, today we're looking at purely migrating from one system or one database to another. Obviously, you may want to have it as part of a continual integration and you could be connecting onto a cloud system. You could be connecting onto a uh, on-premise system uh, or a combination of both. And you may want to actually automate the process of getting information to and from those systems and our integrations to the pillar can sort that out. Uh, there are some other demos on validation and cleansing of that information where you can continuously cleanse and validate the content as it actually goes through. And we can also show you later on in a more advanced video how we can use our Actin Data Connect product to exchange information, receive or pass information to and from our clients and partners and vendors and statutory bodies or government organizations that's required from us. So we can see here the um, login page and we'll click in design and we're going to start from scratch with this one. Um, so we're going to go from right from the basics. So we're going to create a whole new project and just go click on create project and we're going to call this project demo. And we're going to associate anything else to it at the moment. We're just going to create a real quick and simple sort of um, project. Now, the two methods for us to go here is we could actually go from a bottom up approach and create what are called data sets and connect into the various data sources and make sure they're valid and have a look at the information. Or we can go from a top down approach, which is you know, let's create the process first. Um, so we're going to go from the top down approach and uh, you know connect on to a um, project. So this, this one here is uh, M, um, going to be our process. So we're going to connect onto Oracle and onto SQL, and we're going to pass some updated orders between two, two different systems. Now, part of this process that we got, okay, we're going to connect onto these two different systems. Uh, we're going to need to log into to Oracle, and we're going to need to log into SQL. And, um, we may want to work on a, a development environment first before actually going straight into production. So we're going to go in and, and assign some macros. And these macros can store a whole heap of information and configurations. So I've got some here for um, uh, this one for SQL. So let's drag and drop that in. And that's going to contain our login information for how we log into our SQL server. And probably going to need an Oracle one as well. There we go, we've got an Oracle one as well. So these are our dev ones. And it's going to connect on to us how we can connect on to our Oracle database. Now, obviously, we can also have production and other different systems. So you can just all design and development um, here you, um, on our system here and then just simply change the macros across from our test or dev to production and without changing any code at all, which is awesome. So we're going to save those macros in and, and close it out. That's going to be made available um, to us. We have this nice little palette here that we can sort of drop things on. We're going to do a real simple transformation map. So we're going to drag and drop that transformation map in, and uh, we're going to give it a name, which is you know update um, orders from Oracle to Microsoft SQL, and we're going to connect these together, start, run that map, and finish. So obviously we can do a lot more advanced things here, but we're going to start off with some basics. So let's go ahead and uh, create a map. Uh, we'll give this map a name and. I just follow a traditional path of you know, which database to start, you know, the source, which one was the target, and you know what you're sort of doing as a naming sort of convention. Then you can add some versions if you want to and things like that. But for this demo, we're just going to stick with some real basics. So this is going to launch off a, a wizard which will take us through connecting onto 
just two systems to start with. So we're going to click on a source system and a target system. We're going to leave the defaults the same. And then we're going to choose from our connector list the source that we're going to connect onto. And it's the whole list of connections that are available. And if you want, you can build your own as well. So it's quite handy if you've got some sort of legacy or bizarre system that's got an API, then you can actually build the connector if you want to. Now, you saw before I actually put in some uh, macros. And the reason I did that is so that I could obviously use the macro names and uh, just enter in the simple information of, of what's required. So on the database here, you know, we can put in our, oops, our database name as well. You know, rather than storing and hard coding it in, we use macros. And at a server level at runtime, it'll actually be able to connect on to those um, particular systems or, or you can change it from your, you know, dev to your production. So table view, we could probably scroll through our well, myriad of tables and uh, eventually find the one that we want, um, which is in our case demo, uh, our Greg got orders. Um, my name Greg. So I'm grabbing out my orders um, that I've created inside this particular table. Click on establish now. So that's actually doing authentication into Oracle, uh, going in and getting some metadata behind that particular table I've, I've um, selected. Then also going to go out and grab the first 50 rows. It's going to be able to display some information. This makes it really handy for um, when you're integrating is to really understand the sort of data that you're working with. We have this neat little data browser and you'll see this quite a bit and you'll use it quite a bit because it provides the same interface, the same way of actually browsing information. And you'll see in this case here is that we don't just browse that single table, but if we wanted to, we could actually go and click on any table inside that database we've authenticated and start browsing the content and no matter what, system or database that you're connecting into, the uh, browse interface works exactly the same. So we can see here, we can have a look through our data. Oh, wait a minute, you can see this uh, last name here, Pulowski, is um, in, in proper case, and some of the data is in uppercase, and we've got a bit of a mix here, so we might even try and fix it up later on. And that all seems pretty good, so we can actually you know, search through the data, connect out, you know, see what we've got made available to us, and things like that. And if that's, um, you know, if you're pretty happy with the way that information is, then you may want to, um, you know, close that tab out if you wanted to, and in our case, just go back to our orders. So let's go and save that source connection. And you see here on the left hand side, gets populated with that metadata it grabbed out earlier. Now we'll go and choose our target. Now, target in this instance is going to be a um, SQL Server. I'm going to use SQL Server 2008. Um, there is actually a 2008 mass insert, the multi-mode connector if you're doing updates and inserts and deletes and upsets. In this case, we're just going to do a replace table because we're going to make it pretty easy to start off with. So we'll just, again, let's put in our SQL um, server and our macros that we've sort of defined earlier. And this is great because you can actually configure macros to be used by your developers and don't provide them access to the macros for your production systems because that can only be accessed by your admin people. In doing that, you're ensuring your developers are not working on any production systems or don't have the capability of working directly on any production systems now. Now, it's doing a, a login into the actual SQL Server, and uh, it's going to respond back and it's going to find you know, so many sort of databases or sorry, tables that are available for this particular database. Um, and once we know it's been populated, we could actually go and connect onto it and, and see how we go. We can also just type in any new name of a, um, a table and it'll actually go and create that for us. So um, in our case here, we'll, just go, oops, we'll actually just go and create one called uh, My Orders and establish connection. It's going to say to us that, hey, this table doesn't exist. Now, obviously, if the table did exist, we could um, just select that table and go and get the metadata and show us the data. In our case, the table doesn't exist, so we're just going to use the source schema. So I'm doing something scary here. I'm creating a table on the fly. Um, I'm going to create this table, but I'm also going to automatically map everything together because I'm quite lazy at doing these things. You can actually go through and do some exact matches, and, and in our case, because they are exactly the same, it is going to match up everything together. Now, this is quite simple and easy, and obviously, if, if it didn't find it, you didn't have exact matches, I'll just remove one of these, you would have to click, drag, and hold, and release, and that's how you link the fields together. 
In essence, we could now press play and our data would get migrated across. But we did find that our last name field had a mixture of different cases. So I'm going to actually write some code. So here we go. And there's some scary stuff now. So here's the expression builder. And I know it's something I want to do with text. So I'm going to expand on text. Oh, there you go. There's one called UCase. And it tells me a little bit of help there. It returns a string, blah, blah, blah. So basically, that's what we want. So I'm going to double click on that and it says, oh, it's a UCase function. It's going to require a string. Now, the string I want is a field. So I've got the field linked here. So let's double click that in. And we now have the details and we can actually validate that. And it says, yep, our last name is valid. That's great. Let's save it. And we can close it. So now we've just actually done a, a basic map that is also going to convert the last name to uppercase. What it's actually done for us is actually done a real simple rule that says when this record starts, it's going to output to this record here. And we're showing a real simple example of a one-to-one -one style mapping. Now, obviously, we can go into far more complex mappings with um, adding in lookups. We can add a uh, lookup in here if we wanted to. We could actually do a uh, lookup into another database or cloud-based application to get some information. In this case, though, there's a simple one-to-one. -one. You could have a one-to-many, you know, output into multiple targets. You can add in as many different targets um, as you like as well. In this case, we're just going to save it. Um, we should validate and we'll validate it. And saying our map is valid, which is fantastic. So let's go and press play and see what happens. Now, this is actually going to run the job on us. So posting the job off to our server and putting it into the actual message queue. It'll actually run the job and tell us that 100 records have been transformed. That's fantastic. We can look at the detailed log and it says, look, it read in 100 records and we've actually inserted. 100 records. So that sounds pretty good, but how do I actually know that it's done its job? Well, let's click on this data and we can have a look at our source data. Again, we can now, when we've run the job, have a look because we've got those connections still open to those source and target data systems when we're in this sort of development mode. We can have a look at the source data and see that, yeah, that's our source data that we're connecting onto. Now, of course, what happens is when we click on the source, it's doing a authentication to it again and uh, getting the metadata and also getting all the other information like the first of 50 records to come back in and that can take a few extra seconds to actually do. You see here our data looks pretty much the same. There's that um, Polinsky person that's got that uh, prop, you know, in proper case and there's a few other ones like Rathman and stuff. So let's have a look at our target data. I'm going to preview it as well. So again, it's now connecting not onto our Oracle database but now connecting on our Microsoft SQL database. And we can see here that, yes, it's put them all in uppercase. So it's done a little mini transformation. So we can actually show that we've actually done something, not just in moving the data, but we've actually transformed that data from the actual source and target data systems. That pretty much uh, ends the demo for how we can actually move data between two different databases. I know it's a really simple one, but sometimes you'll start off with some simple stuff first before you move into some more complex ones. I hope you enjoyed. My contact details are there. My name is Greg Craven. You can contact me at gcraven at cumulus.com.au.